Hello, Miles Maeda here with more modern yoga movement videos for you. In this series, we are going to be looking at sun salutations and the role the fascia plays in our movements. One of the most valuable things we can do in our practice is to vary our movements. If we practice the same way every day, then we are missing out on the opportunity to not only train the body, but train the fascia, the nervous system, and allow us to have increased awareness of our body and of our movements. In this video, we will look in detail at the postures of sun salutation and how we can be aware of the fascial lines and have a different experience of our movements, ultimately creating more stability and ease in our practice. This first video, we will be focusing on the details of the postures of sun salutations. And in the second video, we will have a flowing practice where we can integrate the details as well as develop increased awareness of our postures and our movements. Let us look at the four fundamental fascial lines in a very basic and simple way. We are going to be looking at four of the fascial lines or meridians and how we can incorporate them in our sun salutation practice. We have the front line, which is a general upward flow of energy up the front of the body. So you can feel this from the tops of your feet, the shins, the knees, the thighs, up to the hips. Also the pubic bone, the solar plexus, sternum. And now this lift continues along the sides of the neck, the sternocleidomastoid, and ends at the back of the skull, so the occipital ridge. We have the back line, and you can feel that flowing from the back of the head, going down the neck. It includes the shoulder blades, the scapula, the back of the ribs, the sacrum, and you can feel the energy continuing to flow from the sits bones down the backs of the legs to the heels. We have the lateral lines and these run up the sides of the body. These create stability in our posture and in our movements. And you can feel this from the outside edge of the feet, going up the outside of the legs, hips, oblique abdominals, the ribs, going all the way up to the sides of the neck, even including the ears. The last line we'll be incorporating is our myofascial core. So this runs up the very center of the body, and you can feel this from the arches of the feet, inner thighs. It includes a lift at the pelvic floor, all along the spine, up through the throat. There are obviously more details about these meridians, but for the purpose of this video, we are keeping it very basic and very simple. There are 12 postures in sun salutations, and let us review what those are. So first, we have our equal standing pose or mountain pose. That's number one. Number two is the hands reaching upward. Three is our forward bend. Four, half forward bend. Five is plank. Six is lowered plank. Seven is upward facing dog. And eight is downward facing dog. Nine is going back to half forward bend. 10, forward bend. 11, hands reaching upward. And 12, equal standing pose. Now let us look at the details of how we can integrate the role of the fascia in these postures. 
Let's begin with equal standing pose. The feet are together. We spread the toes and we feel the feet grounded on the floor. And we feel this at the heels, the roots of the little toes, as well as the balls of the feet at the roots of the big toes. We want to feel this deep inner lift. So the arches, inner thighs, pelvic floor, all along the spine, up through the throat is lifting. And we want to also pay attention to our pelvis. So it is centered. We have a lift up the front of the body. So you can feel the pubic bone gently lifting up and we have energy flowing down the back of the body. So you can feel the energy at the sacrum flowing down. You can feel an energetic connection of the sits bones to the heels. Here we can incorporate the lateral lines and feel like we're trying to slide our feet out to the sides. And it's a very gentle engagement. And notice how this helps you feel a little more stability in this posture. So here we can feel a lift at the sternum. We can feel the shoulders relax down and we feel that continued lift up the front of the body at the back of the skull. Now I'm gonna to move to the front of the mat here. So let's keep this deep inner lift and keep the lateral lines engaged by feeling the feet just gently sliding out to the sides, but staying fixed to the mat. And then we bring the arms up and we continue feeling this deep inner lift and we look up. Now here, there can be compression in the back of the neck as well as compression in the lower back. So we want to be aware if we are letting the head go back too far and if we are creating too much of an arch in the lower back. So again, the centering of the pelvis corrects this in the lower back. And when we look up, we want to feel a lift at the back of the skull. So that might help. So press down through the feet, spread the feet wide and feel a lift up the front of the body as you look up, including the back of the skull and feel energy flowing down the back of the body, especially at the sacrum, an energetic connection of the sits bones to the heels. Then we do our forward bend. Bring your arms out to the sides and this is just so that it distributes the weight so it's not so much strain or stress on your back. The pelvis travels back and we lengthen the spine forward. So we're continuing to keep spreading the legs slightly sideways. And we're using our hip flexors here to continue this forward bend until we can get our hands on the floor. If you can't get your hands on the floor, you can put your hands on your legs. So feel this lift up the legs and feel the lift along the front of the spine. And we can go deeper into the forward bend. Now, if you can get your hands flat on the floor, you can press your hands forward like you're trying to slide your hands to the front of the mat. But again, we keep them fixed to the mat. And here we can use the assistance of the arms to help us with this forward bend. We have a little bit of internal rotation in the legs, a lift at the sits bones and spreading the sits bones wider. Then we move into our half forward bend here. Again, we are continuing to just feel a little bit of engagement of the legs, the feet sliding out to the sides. We want to have a nice flat back. Now it's called flat back, but we want to feel an extension of the spine. So you can feel the sacrum and the sits bones reaching backward, and you can feel the crown of the head reaching forward. So the shoulders are down, we have a nice long neck. Then bend the knees, place the hands flat on the floor, and you can step or walk back into your plank position. Now we're gonna take a little pause here and come out of the pose and sit down. Holding the plank pose is challenging. 
and we can definitely focus on muscular engagement when we are in our plank, but we can also focus on the role of the fascia. So what helps me a lot is to engage the lateral lines. Now we also have lateral lines in the arms. So from that little finger, edge of the hand, it travels all the way up to the shoulders. So if we have our hands fixed on the floor, but we feel like we're sliding our hands out to the sides of the mat, spreading our shoulder blades wide, that engages the lateral lines of the arms. We can also do the same thing with the feet. Feel like we're spreading our feet, spreading our legs towards the sides of the mat, and that engages the lateral lines in the legs and in the torso. We can also feel that upward flow of energy at the front of the body and a downward flow of energy at the back. So let's try that. So in our plank pose, the hands are shoulder width apart, feet are hip width apart. You're pressing down into the floor, reach the heels back, and we want to feel a little lift at the belly. Shoulders are down and spread your hands, spread your arms wide. So the shoulders are being spread wide. And also without moving your feet, just feel like you're trying to slide them out to the sides of the mat and feel the engagement of the legs as well. Feel the flow of energy up to the front of the body. Again, this ends at the occipital ridge at the back of the skull. And also feel energy flowing down the back of the body out through the heels. From plank position, bend the elbows coming down into lowered plank. Do your best to keep your shoulders the same level as your elbows. Keep pressing the heels back Nice core engagement. Then you come to the tops of the feet for upward facing dog. Keep spreading the shoulders wide, keep extending through the legs and feel a lift up the front of the body and energy flows down the back of the body. Roll over your toes, lift the pelvis and come into your downward facing dog. Here, we spread the fingers and toes, press down the thumbs and the index fingers, as well as the outer edges of the palms. Press the hands away from the feet, and this can help this posture feel a little bit lighter. So we're engaging the fascia in the arms. Spread the arms wide, spread the shoulders wide. Spread the feet, spread the legs wide. Feel a lift of the sits bones. Feel them widening a little bit. We're gazing at the pubic bone, feel a lift there. And the shoulders are down from the ears, so we have a nice long neck. Then we bend the knees, look forward, come up into our half forward bend feeling like we're spreading the feet sideways, engaging the lateral lines. Forward bend, you can press the hands forward to encourage the upper body to come closer to the legs. And then sweep the arms out to the sides, center the pelvis, ground the legs and feet. Feel a lift up the front of the body, including a lift at the back of the skull. Feel the energy flowing down the back of the body through the heels, and then come back into our starting posture equals standing pose. When you feel ready, you can integrate this information in the next practice video.